Hi. Hi, Rick. We're going to present to you with this video the report, our report on a sustainable way to maintain New Zealand trails in New Zealand. So next slide, please. First, we'll, you will have the, the slide send it to you so you can have access to the PowerPoint with a better quality. First, we will need to thank you for this opportunity to develop our skill and to help you reach your objective. We will also want to thank Jan Smuller because he was really helpful during this, during this process. He helped us with guidelines and inputs. Here is executive summary. We know mountain bike New Zealand is a growing sport, but it's now facing a main issue, which is lack of funding, which will lead to a deterioration of the quality of the trail and therefore the quality of the experience of the rider. We, I, we have come up with different options for options that we will present in this report and how we have achieved this option. Finally, we will uh, point out the step of implementation. This is uh, all the agenda and how we're going to tackle the, 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 and explain the different options. Next, Nancy is going to present to you the background. Thank you, Matthew. Mountain biking is becoming more and more popular in, New uh, in, in the world, especially in New Zealand. Since 1998, there has been a 5.3% increase in recreational road cycling in New Zealand. According to statistics, there are 202,000 mountain bikers in New Zealand. They are able to enjoy a great untouched environment, which will increase their Consciousness, cons consciousness of environmental protection. For the actual sport survey in 2007, we have known that mountain biking was the 80th most popular activity in New Zealand. Mountain, uh, mountain Bike New Zealand is the country's, country's national association for mountain bikes. Uh, Here is a list of the, of the mountain bike New Zealand purpose. The main purpose of mountain bike New Zealand is a fundraising for building and maintaining the mountain bike trust. Also, they would like to increase the participation and to attract new riders. Next. Uh, we have figures of participation from previous survey conducted in 2007. Over 6% of New Zealand population is, is, is mountain biking. Uh, typically, the riders are the men. The age is between 35 to 49. Uh, oh, also, only 1% of mountain bikes are affiliated to the, the mountain bikes. Next. Uh, size 2001. Mountain bikes important, imp imports will increase 88%. Uh, also, in last year, up to 80% of all bicycle sales in New Zealand are the mountain bikes. This is an uh, indication of growing trend which suggests an increase in participation. Uh, there are 32 mountain bike clubs are affiliated to uh, mountain bike New Zealand. We had access uh, 23 mountain bike clubs, and uh, they were all showing increase in memberships except for one. Next. Uh, here has four issues for uh, mountain bike New Zealand. The first one is lack of funding and maintenance fees for trails is a serious problem that we should face. All staff for the system are volunteers. So, lack of workers and staff is one of the issues. Also, trails are free to use. It is a tradition of New Zealand. Moreover, only 1% of mountain bike lists are affiliated. So, most of them are independent and they are unlikely to join in clubs. In addition, the past charge has the enforceability problem. It is impossible to enforce Permanent and there is no any measure. Uh, here is four opportunities for the mountain bike New Zealand. Because of New Zealand's 100% uh, 
pure position, New Zealand is recognized as one of the most beautiful, uh, unspoiled, and scenic places. So, mountain biking riders are able to visit beautiful scenery of nature while doing uh, mountain bike sport. Mountain biking is growing he is growing healthy and friendly sport that attracts a lot of people. Uh, due to the idea of environmental protection, lots of rats want to support building and maintaining the trails. So most rats who enjoy in the mountain bike activity, they would like to be involved in the trails by donations or buying a pass. Next. Uh, here is our objective we need to achieve. We need to create a sustainable system for support of mountain bike in New Zealand through a composition of models, which should be self-sufficient and cost-effective. Next, welcome Fiona. Hello everyone, we are going to show you the range of trail pass models in the world. And in USA, they are trial pass enforced. USA has implemented a user pay model for the trials. The full tax fees is required for off-road readers. And this could up to 1.5 million in funds for the, from the states. And for state trial pass, it usually costs from $20 to $100 annually. Next, please. Uh, the French and the Hong Kong still do not charge the users, but are getting more support from government and associations. So the users can still continue to use and enjoy the benefits of a free or charge. In Hong Kong, even though the government introduced increased the support, they have introduced a permit for mountain biking, uh, which is free or cost. They, they just need to fill an application forms, but a backers who without without the permit will be fined. Um, Scotland has gone in for a mixed mixed uh, approach, where on top of the government support, they have found additional support from uh, sponsorship and charging the users a minimum amount in the form of car parking charge the at the shelves. Next, please. And uh, according to the research, according to the research, uh, this is according to the research of Scotland report. Uh, the Scotland uh, Mountain Bank Develop Commit was created to invite all the stakeholders and uh, gather inputs from everyone's uh, own, uh, everyone's point of view. The SMBDC realized the needs of multi, uh, multiple sources of funding for uh, ensuring sustainability. The committee, uh, committee will merge the money, collect the money, and further use the money for maintenance of the trails. Next, please. Here is the limitation of application in New Zealand. Even though the, the projects of user pay are success in their previous countries, but it, it may not suit to New Zealand because different, there are different customs and uh, different traditions. So the users from different countries have a different concept about the, this user pay system. Another fact that is enforceability of the user pay system as the trials are spread as spread all over the country with multiple entry points and lack of staff to monitor it all over the country. Uh, to monitor the paths all over the country, it is very difficult to enforce. Next, please. There are the opportunities we have found for mountain bike New Zealand because the user pay model has been success in some countries, so uh, such as Scotland, USA. So it can be said that the user pay model is accept, accepted globally, which is a good trend. And uh, the Scot Scotland model has three revenue streams, national funding, sponsorship, and revenue, revenue from the users in terms of car parking fees, but this model has to identify to suit the New Zealand market. 
Uh, next, we are um, Matthew to introduce the findings. Thanks. So in the findings, we have developed a literature review to support the different concepts, especially the user of a system in New Zealand. So we will discuss the loyalty concept, the willingness to pay concept, and weight opportunity and limits for each of them. Next. Okay, thanks. So the loyalty concept say that in leisure, people that are loyal are committed and involved in the sport. They develop a sense of ownership by volunteering and participating in maintaining the trails of the system. We also see that a client or a user can become loyal by being involved. That's a number we have supported with within the trend, showing that the increase of club members. Finally, we're saying that loyalty is really interesting for the small as it is six, up to six times more efficient to retain a client than seeking for a new one. The willingness to pay concept is associated to the value and the worth thinking by think by the by the users, which means how much do you like and enjoy your sport? There is a, is a simple method to assess this willingness to pay. It's based on a question on two parts. First, how do you feel about this sport? How much do you practice it? Your social expectation? And the second part is how much are you ready to support it? How much can you and how much do you see values for this? So the results of this study show that there is a strong correlation between the willingness to pay, the willingness to support, and the affective of the sport. I mean, it does not people who go a lot are not willing, are not necessarily willing to pay more, but people who really enjoy the sport, or people who are passionate, it could be retired writer, could be professional, could be business people who only can go on the weekend. These people who like and enjoy the sport are more willing to support us on these people we are basing on options. Okay, about the use of this willingness to pay. We can use it to really define the three factors we need to implement our system around. The moral, the social expectation, and the affordability. Hopefully these three factors are easy to assess and identify with the users. So in order to highlight this point, we have made a case study. We have studied a case study in Finland about the public recreation fundraising. We have chosen Fire Finland because as New Zealand they have they have the same position regarding environment and health. And also because the services are currently provided for free. Next one. So here you can see um, a sum up of the studies. And especially, we focus on the ski track because in the mind of the customer, that's why come close to the, um, to the mountain biking. And you can see as 65% of them are not willing and are ready to support for these current services. So like I was saying, users are not ready to support a service-free activity. But results shows also that they will be ready to support if there is new services. As potential solution, for example, we're thinking about guided trip or ski field with coaches. That's what um, users are ready to support financially. Okay, next one. Okay, so we have seen also that uh, visitors are willing to support for each visit. There is altruistic reason. I mean, it's disinterested. And they care about the past, present, and future generation of users who can enjoy this culture and traditional resources. An average per person per year, they, we can collect $33 in Finland to support public recreation services. With a recreation pass, a recreation pass is an individual decision and it will be opposed to public, public tax which englobe everyone. So the comparison of the two models, the first model is a rate pass can generate up to 120 million annually. It's also creates independence for the activities as they will less rely on the government. The government can raise like twice less with public taxes as one can do an individual rate pass. Next one, 
we can we have summarized here in one table all the opportunities and limits that you can see on your slide. The conclusion of these findings are a user fee system can be can be draw, it could be supported. So opportunities will be the loyalty and the commitment of the of the mountain biker in New Zealand. They're really passionate and have a high value of their sport. And this will generate more money than getting fundraising from the government. The limits, as we have seen in the Finland case study, they're not they don't want to pay for current services, they want to uh, to experience new services. And we think that could over like overcome the lack of impossibility of enforcement in New Zealand. So we have developed four options to tackle these issues. So the first one is what we call a trail pass. It's based on the willingness of the user without the enforcement. And the three lines are sponsoring, merchandises, and installed donation. This one is based on the model we have seen all over, all over the world. So first, you can see the trail pass. It's a basically a sticker you put on your bike. It sustains the trail for one year. You renew it every year. You get the sponsor area. You got your year. It's, you got the name of the user and the serial number to track it. So we have described four categories. You can have the description, you have the description in the report and on your site. So I will really go quickly through all the process of this option. So first the categories, four categories, recreational, advanced, families, and concession. Then the process, it's an online process with either electronic payment or cash payment in the post office. The outcome, it helps to create, to of course to increase the quality of the trail, but also involve the user and ensure annual revenue. The system, we got three systems to increase the penetration, the auto subscription, the club membership, and the temporary an anonymous trail pass. So the first one, it's an installed one, so it's an agreement with our retailers. So you can go through one. One more here. Go back here. So it's um, a summary of how uh, does it work? Basic increase of two percent of the price. The percentage option is uh, supporting the report. What we decided to come up with that instead of a fixed cost. Ninety percent go to Mountain Bike New Zealand Fund. Ten percent uh, as a commission for the retailer. Next one. Then we got the club membership. It's an agreement with every club. When riders sign up or renew their membership they can enjoy a discount on the trail pass. The process will be also discussed in the report. You got an example of the Hamilton Mountain Bike Club. So every club has a unique code so we can monitor how many trail pass are sold per club. So the user gets the code, it goes online, subscribe, gets the discount. And this code, unique code helps us monitor and so we can reward the club so for 10 trail pass sold by the club, they get one for free. They can give to the staff, they can give to the best rider, or use as prizes during events. And finally, the anonymous temporary pass is aimed at tourism and, and visitors, non-resident visitors. It's for short-term use, it's nameless, and you can buy it in the eyesight and travel agencies. Next one, we're going to present the trail. Oh, we, uh, we want to support this trail pass. Hi, hi, Rick. Uh, just gonna show you a couple of options by uh, how we can support the trade, uh, trade pass. The first one is increasing the online presence. Uh, when I mean, I talk about increasing the online presence, uh, we have to have an update. Um, the mountain bike website has to be updated in terms of letting people know what the trade pass is and uh, how it will benefit the society. Another online, uh, on, online uh, way to spread the message is by relying on the social networking websites like Facebook and Twitter. Facebook and Twitter, this is the current uh, page of the, uh, the Facebook page of Mountain Bike New Zealand. The Facebook page advantage that uh, Mountain Bike New Zealand will have is that any queries the user has or the, any um, information that Mountain Bike New Zealand wants to convey to them, uh, the users can be done instantaneously and efficiently. The next one is a publication. Uh, the publication publication is of two types. Uh, one is the newsletter that Mountain Bike New Zealand is sending, and the other one is the sports magazines. The sports magazines will also help 
spreading the message to the users who currently subscribe and also also with the newsletters the, all the users will will be updated on the current happenings then we have the pamphlets and the signage the pamphlets will also uh, the pamphlets will be distributed at all the eye sites throughout new zealand this will uh, inform all the tourists about the temporary pass and the advantages of it it will also be uh, distributed uh, at, uh, distributed at the bike retail shops the bike expo competitions bike related activities the signage uh, the signage will be installed at the head of all the trails which will let the riders know the uh, riders know about the trail pass and also let uh, also uh, make them understand the need for having this uh, trail pass uh, will uh, trail head would look like this and sponsors can also advertise on on the uh, signages then we have the poster and the in store promotion the posters will be displayed at all the bike stores again conveying the message of the trail pass and then there will be the in store promotion wherein uh, wherein the um, the stores can promote uh, the trail pass along with the sale of the bike the second option is merchandising which will be explained by frida so according to the research that the sales of merchandise are a good idea for mountain biking for the reason for example readers readers would like to wear a t-shirt which has the logo of mountain bike New Zealand, they think this shows their support of mountain bike system. And next is the step of setting up setting up a merchandise program. Um, the purpose of the merchandise is a fundraising for MT, uh, mountain bike New Zealand mountains. And also build brand awareness could be the, uh, is the secondary purpose for us. According to the research, we need to make a business plan carefully. For example, the, the cost is not only the merchandise cost, it should include in the design cost and the other implementation cost. And the segmentation of customers should be done uh, to identify our target customers for sales of merchandise. Um, our target customers are the big fans of mountain bike New Zealand who are female around 35 to 59 year old as we report before so because uh, because they read they write mountain bike frequently and they, and they need to renew their clothing and facilities regularly um next is the next is the last three steps for setting up a merchandise program and next uh, next here is some examples uh, here is the examples of some successful merchandising um, program. Um, firstly, uh, this is uh, Manchester United. They saw the um, eight, this, they, uh, they saw the eight, uh, 81, uh, 81.5 million uh, merchandise in 2020. And the next is the Gulf, Gulf company saw the 12 million in uh, 2009 and uh, next is also uh, is the examples of seven seven stones mountain biking shops uh, uh, the seven seven stone mountain biking community interest company is a non-profit uh, organization in Scotland which supports the seven stones mountain biking shops by making donations and C and C achieve also achieves fundraising from the sales of branded seven stones merchandising. C has unique designs t-shirt uh, in t-shirts, caps, and uh, souvenirs, which are very popular for readers. And uh, next, this is the uh, their merchandisers. And next, this is the price of their merchandisers. Uh, next, this. Uh, this is a benefit of merchandise for their customers. It could remind the wonderful experience for readers. Uh, next, uh, we welcome Rohan to explain. The third option, uh, the third option that we have is sponsorship. Sponsorship. Uh, initially, we need sponsorship for 
two reasons. One is for, one is for the startup of the initi uh, in, uh, initiatives that we are proposing, and then the sustainability of the initiative. For the start, for the startup, we need cause for communication and also for tying up with partners like NC Post for sending the trails and also the signages and uh, and and the marketing. Uh, after that, we need the sponsorship support for the programs like adopting a trail and uh, increasing the uh, increasing the visibility of the trail pass. For that, we need to know why uh, why companies sponsor the companies. The, most of the companies sponsor for many reasons. Some of the reasons are listed below uh, listed on this slide, but the reasons that we will be looking at is. Creating the awareness and uh, um, uh, creating awareness and visibility, showcasing community responsibility, which many of the companies are doing, and and also the merchandising opportunity. The merchandising opportunity is for the companies like uh, the bike manufacturers, like Giant, Cannondale, and all. Uh, they one uh, if they are directly supporting. Uh, uh, supporting the usage of their uh, products. So these are some of the opportunities. And now we have example of the uh, uh, companies in New Zealand which currently sponsor. First one is Air New Zealand. Air New Zealand sponsors for talented individuals and also national organizations. They look at talented Kiwis who has got the potential to make it big and uh, also national community, uh, also national communities which uh, which work for a better New Zealand. Some uh, the, some of the projects that they currently support are listed below. The next one is ASB Bank. ASB Bank, the two areas that ASB Bank concentrate are sports and music, and they do support for arts to a small extent. ASB is currently supporting uh, Northland and Jazz Festival and things like that. The next one is Vodafone. Vodafone, the two major areas that Vodafone support again are sports and music. The reason why Vodafone supports sports and music is because they have identified that these are the two industries their customers are most their, uh, their customers are most concerned about. So they found out by identifying themselves with these things uh, increase their reach reach to the customers. They currently support two teams in New Zealand. Then there is a New Zealand Post. New Zealand Post, uh, they look at three key areas which has been listed. And under that, one of them is increasing the physical activity to improve the, uh, improve the overall well-being in New Zealand, which is one area which Mountain Bike New Zealand can look at. The, to get to attract the sponsors, uh, we, have, uh, the, uh, the, we have to deeply understand a couple of points, which is we have to first we have to identify and understand what our marketable assets are then we need to formulate a, a, a formulate a package the, the package that we proposed is a four tire one the bronze silver gold and the exclusive one the bronze silver and the gold as the name suggests depending is uh, based on the involvement of the sponsors with the uh, with uh, mountain bike new zealand the last one the exclusive one is where we hope to uh, rope in one sponsor to do uh, to sponsor the entire program. Then there are a couple of other uh, other things that we need to look at uh, in uh, a while implement uh, while implementing the sponsorship program. We have listed out uh, some of the potential spo sponsors that could be uh, that Mountain Bike New Zealand could approach uh, approach to get funding. The banks are the the bike manufacturers, the magazines, and food and beverage companies, clothing companies, and also some of the general sponsors who would be interested in supporting this project. The next option will be explained by uh, Nancy. It is the in-store donation. Thank you. Hi. Uh, this is option for in-store donation. According to the research from Terra 2011, many people have experienced being asked to donate $1 to $5 at the checkout counter. Most of them accept to add 
and an extra five dollars to the bill, and it represents a low percentage of their purchase. Moreover, retailers will be willing to support this type of donation campaign, and it goes with customers' moral values and store image. Next, uh, no handwear present. Hi again. I will be talking about the uh, the fund that is uh, the fund that will be collected from the various methods that we have explained. The collected money will be going into a, a fund called called the New Zealand uh, Mountain Bike New Zealand uh, Trail Pass account. This uh, the collected fund uh, will be a contestable fund where wherein uh, the the wherein the people who tra maintain the trail can apply for the fund and based, uh, apply for the fund based on the granting fund guideline which has already been mentioned, which has already been put up in Mountain Bike New Zealand. Once, uh, once the application is weighed and, the, and, and uh, if it qualifies for the grant, uh, the money will be sent, uh, sent across to the applicant. Matthew will be talking about the implementation steps. All right, so we reached the end now. We have presented the four options. And this is the next step that we didn't have time to implement during our time of the uh, of development of this project. So first, this needs to be reviewed and approved by the, um, the association, the Women Mountain Bike News Association. Then we recommend to conduct market research using the survey provided in the appendix of the report and combine it with a willingness to pay method. Then classical marketing mix, communication strategy, and creation of the, of the fund. Then we go to the external implementation step. Next, please. So the first step we need to do is to create an agreement with the different stakeholders uh, seated above and earlier. So we, we have the New Zealand Post and Bank, Mountain Bank Clubs, and retailers. We also have to create an agreement with the sponsors and the um, in-store donation with the retailers. The conclusion, we hope we have created a sustainable model to maintain New Zealand trails. We, want to, we hope we can involve also the riders in the project using especially the social media, having in-term feedback. So if we create a, a mountain bike New Zealand less dependent on governmental funding with an, uh, annual revenues. Next one, please. So, in order to assess the different options, we have created a ranking based on the feasibility and the potential revenue generated. So, you can see first we place sponsors followed by already close the merchandise, the trade pass, and then the install donation. So, we come up with this ranking because the two first appear to be the most feasible, they are proven to work all over the world, and they generate sure annual revenue. The trail pass will generate a lot of revenue, will involve the user, but the limited enforceability and the limited service provided really a uh, huge withdrawal for this trail, for, for the system. And finally, the install donation, we don't have enough information to support it, as it's really hard to assess how much this can um, generate per year and this, this system is only based on money. We don't have any increase of awareness or education. So once again, I want to thank you for this opportunity, and we hope that we have helped you with, uh, with your project. In the behalf of, of my team, I would like to, to thank you.